now begin the 14th lecture on the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah. Today we will begin with Nehemiah chapter 12. There are several important points in the passages, but the giving of offerings is the most important. Singing songs with brothers is also important as it as is written in verse 8. It was recorded in the Bible for that. In verse 24, the people prescribed by David, the man of God, stood and praised in thanksgiving. In verse 25, it was important that the gatekeepers guarded the storerooms at the gates. There are many names recorded in verse 26, and it introduces three important people. First, Joachim, son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak. Second, Nehemiah, the governor. Third, Ezra, the priest and scribe. The people returned from captivity with these three men. Verses 1 to 26 introduce the returnees. Joachim was the son of Jeshua, the high priest, during the time of Zerubbabel. In the times of these three men, there were many people with good faith. Mentors are very important. Leaders who properly teach the Bible are very important. Here it records the names of the forefathers of faith. It records how the people kept their faith in each generation. Through this, they hoped to restore the faith of believers in future generations. Psalm 112 verse 6 says, The name of a righteous man will be remembered forever. The names of the righteous will be remembered forever. It is important that we live in righteousness. We must follow the example of the faithful. We must model ourselves after God. It is important that we follow the footsteps of the fathers of faith in the Bible. We must model ourselves after the fathers of faith and we must keep our faith. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 says, Imitate the faith of those 
who properly teach the Bible, then we will be fruitful. We must meet good mentors. When we follow their examples, our faith will grow. Of course, we must first strive to become like Jesus. It is also important that we follow the example of our fathers of faith. In verses 1 to 11 are the priests and Levites who returned with Zerubbabel and Jeshua. Their names are recorded in Ezra chapter 2, verses 36 to 42. The number of priests who returned was 4,289. The number of Levites who returned was 342. The names of those who returned was recorded. It was recorded again in Nehemiah chapter 7 verses 39 to 45. Therefore, return from captivity was very important. The people's names were recorded. The number of priests who returned is the same in the book of Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah. However, the number of Levites differ. Nehemiah chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. In verses 1 to 7 are the priests who returned, whose names are recorded in verse 1. They are the names of those who returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and with Jeshua, the high priest. Those who returned with the leaders had great faith. There were priests and Levites who returned. They were all recorded in the passage. Now, let's look at this from a different perspective. This shows that there was a large number of people who did not return from captivity. Each person had the choice to return or remain in exile. Yet, the Bible records the names of those who returned from captivity. At the time, it was difficult for people to return to their homelands. They were used to their lifestyles in Babylon because they were there for 70 years. Life was stable in Babylon. It was difficult for the people to give all that up and return, even if they were to safely return to 
Jerusalem, their futures would have been uncertain. Hence, those who gave everything up and returned were honorable people. The names of those who returned are recorded in detail. Their numbers and their lineages are were all recorded. Anything we do in faith will be recorded. There was a characteristic of those who returned to Jerusalem with the leaders of faith. They were people who made great decisions. They did not miss the opportunity that was given them. They discerned God's will. They made sacrifices in their hearts. They were worthy believers. They gained eternal blessings. They were faithful to their positions. They knew what they had to do. They did not go because others went. They did not do this because others did this. Each believer walks alone in faith. We walk alone, but we go together because we are going in the same direction. Everyone walks alone in faith. We too must return. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 14, Ruth became the ancestor of David. Ruth did not return to unbelief. Ruth followed her mother-in-law and her name was recorded in the genealogy. Ruth became the ancestor of Christ. It is important that we follow in faith. We must stick to it. We must have faith to return from captivity. Who do we chase after? We chase after Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 says, Our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. What kind of shepherds are Jesus' sheep? Jesus is the great shepherd. He is a great shepherd. We are the sheep who follow him. We must follow the Lord wherever he leads us. We must follow the Lord's guidance according to his speed and direction. First Peter chapter 2 verse 25 says, You have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. 
We have hope because we have Jesus. Even if the things of the world disappear, we must follow the Lord, our eternal shepherd and overseer. We must receive supervision, direction, and guidance from Jesus and follow him. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 says, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Jesus showed us an example. We must only follow Jesus. It is easy to follow the footsteps of the person in front of us on snowy days. In that way, we must follow the footsteps of the Lord. This is the path that we must walk down. This shows that we believe in Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 11 says that Jesus is the good shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord knows our circumstances and situations. God leads us to the place of grace and blessings. Hence, it is important that we chase after the Lord. In verses 1 to 7 are the names of 22 priests who returned. We must be a part of those who returned. The 22 people who returned are in verse 1. They were leaders. They were believers with mature faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 We must be mature before others. Age is not important. We must be believers who are respected by others in all ways. We must be appropriate leaders. We must be leaders who can differentiate the right path from the wrong path. In verses 8 to 11 are the names of the Levites who returned. What does verse 8 say that Mataniah did? He was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Ezra chapter four, 2 verse 41 Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 9 They were people who sealed the covenant. 
they sealed the covenant. Mataniah was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. It is valuable to to be able to praise God. God is worthy of all praise. No matter what difficulties we face or what diseases we face, all of God's works are worthy to be praised. This was also God's purpose for creating man. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 says, The people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Singing praises is our full-time job. How are we to praise God? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 says, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. How must we live to sing praises? Psalm 31 verse 1 says, It is fitting for the upright to praise God. We will sing praises when we live uprightly. Until when must we sing praises? Psalm 104 verse 33 says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 Verse 9 tells us about Mataniah's two brothers. They were Bakbukiah and Unni. They stood opposite them in the services. This means that they praised God opposite of them. Nehemiah chapter 11 verse 17 They all praised God in their places. There were two groups that sang praises. Praises are a part of our life. In verses 10 to 11 is the genealogy of the high priest. Jeshua was the high priest during the time of Zerubbabel. Jeshua's son was named Joachim. Joachim's son was named Eliashib. Eliashib was the high priest at the time of Ezra's return. Ezra chapter 10, verse 6. However, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 4, records Eliashib's mistake. It says that Eliashib secretly communicated with Tobiah. 
Tobiah interfered with the construction of the Jerusalem wall. The Bible is accurate. Eliashib did not act in faith. Eliashib's son was named Joiada. Joiada was the pre high priest in Nehemiah's time. His faults are recorded in Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 28. He was son-in-law to Sanballat. Sanballat was the man who interfered with the construction of the Jerusalem wall. Joiada did not keep his faith. Joiada communicated secretly with Tobiah. This is recorded in detail in the Bible. Joiada's son Jonathan is recorded in the Bible. Historian Josephus claimed that he killed his brother. In verse 11, Jadua was high priest at the time Alexander the Great entered Jerusalem. This is all recorded in the Bible. Therefore, we must live upright lives before God and before others. In verses 12 to 22 are the names of the heads of the priestly families in the time of Joachim. The names of men in verses 12 to 22 lived in Joachim's time. Joachim was Jeshua's son. There were many good priests at that time. Read verse 26. They served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest and scribe. There are three leaders here. Joachim, Nehemiah, and Ezra were all men of good faith. Many good heads of families were brought up from under these leaders. Here we can see how important leaders are. Good believers with good faith are brought up under the guidance of good leaders. Verses 22 to 26 introduce the famous Levites of Nehemiah's time. It was valuable to be able to serve in the house of God. It is valuable for us to be able to serve God 
and praise God. Johanan was a priest around 400 BC. He was a priest in the time of the last prophet of the Old Testament, Malachi. Read verse 24. And the leaders of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, son of Cadmiel, and their associates, who stood opposite them to give praise and thanksgiving. One section responding to the other as prescribed by David, the man of God. The people gave praise and thanksgiving as prescribed by David, the man of God. Who prescribed this? David, the man of God, prescribed this. We too must be men of God. Moses was also a man of God. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. Moses blessed the Israelites before he died. Anyone who blesses others is worthy. Therefore, the lives of men of God are worthy lives. Samuel, too, was a man of God. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8 Elijah and Elisha were men of God. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 18 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7 How must we live? It is honorable for believers to live by men of God. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11, You, man of God, we must live distinguished lives as men of God. In verses 27 to 37, the believers celebrated with a dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. The Israelites rebuilt the Jerusalem wall with God's great help. Hence, they dedicated the wall to God. The Levites were brought from where they lived, and they sang songs of thanksgiving at the dedication. The singers came from the region around Jerusalem. They gave thanks for God allowing them to complete construction of the city in the midst of difficulties. They also dedicated the city to God. In verse 30, 
the Levites and the priests purified themselves ceremonially for the dedication. They also purified the people, the gates, and the wall. God is holy, and therefore everything we offer to God must be purified. It is likely that they purified themselves with water. We believers must repent of our sins before we worship before God. We must receive Christ in our hearts and become clean in heart and body. And then we must worship God. The dedication is written about in detail in verses 31 to 37. Nehemiah went up to the top of the city wall with Ezra, the priests, the leaders, and all who sing songs of thanksgiving. The people went up to the top of the wall for the dedication. In verse 31, the choir was split into two groups. One was sent to the top of the wall to the right toward the dung gate. Ezra led this group. Those with musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God, followed and sang songs of thanksgiving. In verse 38, the other group went the opposite direction and sang songs of thanksgiving. They went past the tower of the ovens and stopped at the gate of the guard. The singers loudly praised God. In verse 43, the woman and children also rejoiced. In verses 44 to 47, the contributions, first fruits, and tithes to God were given to those who worked in the temple. Nehemiah put the contributions, first fruits, and tithes in the storerooms. Then people were appointed to guard the storerooms. Now that the temple and city wall was built, the people rejoiced in giving tithes and contributions. In verse 47, the Israelites set aside portions for the priests and the Levites. In verse 45, the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they worked 
even more diligently to serve God. The singers and gatekeepers are purified and they obeyed. Thus, the people contributed daily portions for the singers and gatekeepers. The people built the Jerusalem city wall. Then the people joyfully gave contributions and tithes. They also purified themselves and were obedient. This was a graceful time. God was with them and God blessed them. Here we will conclude the 14th lecture on Ezra and Nehemiah. Thank you.